has told of a Magid. A Magid is someone that went from town to town, from city to city, giving chizik to Klal Yisrael, being Ma'uri the lave of Klal Yisrael. These were Yidden that used to run around and be Mechazik other Yidden. Choshevich, Tzadikim, people that were very, very, very well versed in Kola Kula and they were very, very in the Inyonim. And there was some Magid that went to a far flung place in the middle of nowhere and he's speaking in front of the whole community. It's Elul. It's a few weeks before Rosh Hashanah and he decides he's going to give a schmooze to the Olam. He's going to light the fire inside them and make sure that this is going to be great. And he gets up and he starts speaking that every single one of you after 120 years of leaving this world are going to go in Shamayim and there's going to be a din and they're going to go and scrutinize every single action, every thought, everything you saw, everything you heard, every, everything. And the Olim were hopping it, the Olim were getting it, the Olim were trembling. At some point during the shmooz, people started crying. These were not, you know, necessarily B'nai Torah, these were regular normal Yidden in the middle of who knows where. And he was getting the Olim going, but he noticed that there was one guy who was at the back and he was smiling. He standing there, sitting there smiling, everything was chilled, everything was great. And it, was like, it was interesting, he's like, okay, it's not stark enough, it's not big enough. So he goes on, and he says, Rabbi Sai, that he must have been, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, he's screaming. The oil of my you can hear the oil of cry. This guy at the back is almost laughing. It's ridiculous. What's the pshat? What's going on? So at the end of the shmooze, he calls over the guy who was in the corner. He says, tell me something. Was that a bad schmooze? Did, I not, like, did it not work? Like, what happened? I do this everywhere, it normally works. He says, no, Rabbi, you don't understand. I don't live in this town. And therefore, everything you said is not negated to me. But I live somewhere else. I'm just a guest here, it's fine. And sometimes we think the same subconsciously about what we hear from many of the speeches, the schmoozes, the drushes, whatever it may be. It's not a gay to me. I'm fine. Let me just move on. All this Elul talk, right? I'm sure everybody saw the, the a video that went around for Echad Magdoyle Ador. Clap on the beamer with the Elul. People laugh. What a joke that he does, he does it for the shtick. But it's an emistic azach. You know, Chazal told us some of the things that happened during Elul, which we'll discuss, Be'ez Hashem. And the truth is, this is really the time for Allah Hashem, but Lemaisa, it's Elul. And if we're not going to do it now, Hey Masai, when's it going to be? So, there was a Gera Chassid that lived in Chutzaretz and he came for the very first time to see his Rebbe. And he was so excited to get a brocha from the Gera Rebbe. The way it works is, in Gera, if you know, is that all the Chassidim filed past the Rebbe. We're talking about thousands upon thousands of Chassidim that are piling past the Rebbe on Rosh Hashanah night to get a brocha from the Rebbe on Leila Kodosh on Rosh Hashanah. It, it's a Gavaldi Gashchus. And he pushed, waited the entire year for this. He comes into Shul, he's excited, he knows at the end of Davening, the Chassidim are going to pile up, there's going to be lines, he'll wait, he's got patience, he's got all the time in the world. He waited for this bracha, he's excited to get the bracha. It's a small bracha, a bracha about Tzlacha, Gajantuf, and the Gaba moves them on. It doesn't take very long because they haven't got time, there's so many thousands of people there. Anyway, he's waiting in line. And he's excited and he gets closer and he gets closer and his anticipation is building up. It's getting exciting. I'm getting closer and closer to the Rebbe. How often is it that every regular Chassid can go and see his Rebbe face to face and get a brach of him in personally? It's amazing. He's all excited. <clears throat> and he's getting closer and closer and finally he gets to the Rebbe. And his real plan was to shout out his daughter's name because his daughter was 28 years old, desperate for a shidduch, and he wanted the Rebbe to give a bracha specifically with her in mind. We got to the Rebbe, he froze. He, he, he didn't know what to say. Before you knew it, bracha v'atzlacha g'jont of the Gabba said next, and it was gone. He said to the guy behind him, I don't believe it, I waited the entire year for this. I waited the whole year for this. I, I missed it, that's it, it's gone, I've got to wait till next year. So the guy behind him told him, I'll give, you an example. I'll, I'll give you advice, I'll tell you what to do. Next time you do this, don't wait till you get to the Rebbe to talk. Start talking before you get to the Rebbe. And this way you'll pluck up the courage, and this way you'll be able to talk with confidence, so that when you get there, you'll be able to say what you want to say. Rebbe said, that's what's going on now. You can't just roll into a Rosh Hashanah. 
You rock up to the base medrash. I got my place. I got all my books. I bought every art scroll book that they just came out with to make sure that I am filling my time during davening to the maximum. I'm ready to go. Rosh Hashanah. This is it. You can't just rock up to Rosh Hashanah. You need to start speaking before you get there. And that's what Elul is. That is exactly what Elul is and that's what we're doing at this specific time. There's an unbelievable Maril. The Baril writes in Chuvas, listen to this, Rabbi he said, this is astounding. He says that we know there's an union of being Moisif, Choyl al Kodesh. That means to make early Shabbos, to keep Shabbos a bit longer. By Yontav, there's also an union to take it in a bit earlier, to make sure you don't get it out as quick as possible. There's an union to be Moisif, right? To add a little bit, right, of Kodesh from the Chol, from the Chol to the Kodesh. There's one problem, he says. Don't make Rosh Hashanah early. Now, I don't know anyone that does. I don't think there's ever a minion in the world that makes early Rosh Hashanah. There's early Shabbos that we know of, right? When it's too late at night, they make early Shabbos. Is there such a thing as early Rosh Hashanah? I don't think so. But he writes, don't make early Rosh Hashanah. What's the problem? What's the, what's the matter? I want to have more of a Rosh Hashanah. I want to say Tehillim. I want to daven more. I want to have more Kavon and I don't want to do it with everybody else. I want to start earlier. Let me make early Rosh Hashanah. He says, no. You know why he says you can't make early Rosh Hashanah? What's the problem with making Rosh Hashanah a few minutes earlier? A few minutes, a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. What's the problem? You know what he says? He says the problem is that you're missing out a few moments of Elul. And by you making Rosh Hashanah early, you're missing those moments of Elul. Do we realize, do we understand what it is in Elul? The Heilige Chadush Rim brings down, as many of the tzaddikim say, that Elul is a matona toiva, Be'etzim is chazal. It's a beautiful present. The Rabbi Nishan gave us a present called Elul. That we have an opportunity to start to talk to the Melech Malchei Amlochim before the Yom Adin, Before we get judged. It's the Heilige Balatanya said, Melech Basodeh. That normally it's so hard to reach the Rabbi Yishol Olam. It's so hard to get connected. It's so hard to really tap into the Kedusha. But Elul, the Rabbi Nishan was right here. The Rabbi Nishan was mamish here with us. And every moment of Elul is so incredibly important, is so incredibly powerful that we could do so much. And every single one of us, not so long ago, a few days ago, when Rish Kodesh Elul received an invitation, on that, on that invitation it said, in 30 days you are called to court. You're going to stand in front of the Melech Malchem Lochem, and he's going to decide what type of year you're going to have, how much health, how much parnasa. How much simcha, how much everything. We got called to court, every single one of us, that in 30 days from Rosh Chodesh is going to be the time that we're going to be judged. And we have to realize if we start speaking to the Melech Mal- Malchem Lochem now, before it gets to the Yom Adin, it makes it much easier to talk. The Rosh Hashanah will be a different Rosh Hashanah. If we know that in Elul we started to talk, we started to connect. So a person can think, you know, Okay, very nice, great, but you know, what do you want us to do? Who are we already? What can we accomplish? Look at the tzaddikim of previous generations, the tanoim, the amaroim, the goinim, the rishonim, the achronim. These were people that knew how to do things. The avoid of the tzaddikim was, was a whole different level. Us? I don't know, maybe I speak for myself, but like, you know, what, what can we do? What can we possibly accomplish? Stalika Chovetz Chaim once said over the following, he said that a, a year, a very successful businessman came over to him right before the war started, First World War, and he asked the Rebbe for a bracha. He said, Chofetz Chaim, I need a bracha. I need a bracha for my panos. He said, you? You're known to be the most popular wholesale person of grain. Everybody buys from you in bulk. You're selling millions all over, exporting, importing. You're a very successful person. What do you need a bracha for? He said, Rabbi, I need a bracha. So he gave him a bracha. A couple of years later, after the war, he met he met this merchant at the marketplace selling small packages of grain that he had sold previously in huge quantities. And the Chavetz Chaim said, no has business. Business is better than ever. Chavetz Chaim said, what's pshat? I don't understand. When you were selling tons and everything was in big quantities, so then you were asking me for a bracha, you were worried. Now you're selling in small quantities and you're saying everything is even better than normal. What's pshat? So he said, Rabbi, I'll tell you pshat. Because before, when I was selling in big bulk and big quantities, so they were makbid. Ah, there's, a bin, there's loads of people selling. You're also selling. We're going to investigate. We're going to see what you're selling. Is it good quality? Are you being just in the weights to making sure that everything is you know, the way it's meant to be? It wasn't easy. I sold, but it wasn't easy. Now, we're after the war. 
now there's hardly any people selling grain. Now people are just like, whatever, just take, give me whatever it is. Just give me, give me, give me. So I'm just selling without anyone scrutinizing any of my actions or anything that I'm selling. So the Heilige Chovetz Chaim, it's the same thing right now. You're right, in previous generations, the Gedolim, the Tzadikim, they were able to do incredible avoidance Hashem. But that's because everybody else was doing that. And there were so many people in the same field, so to speak. Bas, you look at the world. You look what's going on. It's there's so much choyshech, there's so much darkness that all we have to do, says the Chovetz Chaim, and all the Rabbi Nishaloylam looks at is the minutest, tiniest bit of effort that we put in to change ourselves, to become better people, to reconnect, as we're going to say many, many times. Tshuva over here is not translated as repentance. Tshuva is Velosh and Shav, it's to return. It's to go back to where we're meant to be. It's to go back to how it's meant to have been. And that's what an Elul is. But that means the slightest bit of effort, the smallest thing that we are makabal on ourselves to try and do. And there's so many areas, whether it's in Tfila, whether it's in Brochus Bekavona, Negelvasa, Tzitzis, there are endless amounts of things that we can pick and just one tiny thing. We all know that some of the Gedolian, they say from Rav Shach, that he took upon himself an El, just simply to say benching in a siddha, but only when he's at home. Not even when he's in yeshiva. Rav Shach, you, you know benching is about pair, you know the parish of benching, you know everything about benching, what, all the what, what does that mean? Because he understood if you take on something too much, it's not going to happen. We have to find the tiniest, smallest thing that we can do and we can change. And the Rabbi Nishim says, that is worth more to me than what all the Gedolim, Tzadikim, Rishonim and Achronim could have done. Bismanehem. Because we're living in a world, we're living in a situation where there is so much darkness. So the smallest bit of light causes a tremendous thing. Chazal tell us, Misha Torah Be'er of Shabbos, Yerichol B'Shabbos, that means that if you walk into a Shabbos and you don't prepare, you're not going to eat anything. You're going to be starving because they didn't prepare anything. <laughs> one who prepares before Shabbos, says Chazal, is the one who eats on Shabbos. And therefore the greater preparation that you put in to Shabbos Kodesh is the greatest Shabbos that you'll have. We'll talk about Shabbos Kodesh. It's the same thing over here. The greatest preparation, and this is not the time right now, but I'll call upon him, I'll be the chassidish asfarim, the achon of the mitzvah is greater than the mitzvah itself. Right, there's rise in the bear from the bear locha in Hilchas Shoifa that there's a hachana of something is greater because it causes the outcome to become greater. We're holding now by Misha Torah Be'er of Shabbos. If you want to have a good Rosh Hashanah, if you want to make sure that you have a good Rosh Hashanah, and a good Rosh Hashanah means a good year, which everything is decided. Everything that happened to you until now was decided last year. That means everything's going to be decided this Rosh Hashanah, the next year. You want to have a good Rosh Hashanah? It's now. Don't wait till Erev Rosh Hashanah, don't wait till Slichas, don't wait until Asayi Sevei Tshuva, don't wait until Yom Kippur. It's right now. This is the moment that we can change. This is the moment we should Torah Be'erev Shabbos. That means we'll eat on Shabbos, we'll have a good Rosh Hashanah, which means we'll have a good year. Chazal tell us, Yesh koina oilomoi b'sha achas. There are people that are koina their oilom, the entire world, in one moment. So some, the Posh Pshat is, a person could do tshuva, a person can do something and everything can change. There's a different mahalach. <laughs> Somebody was in the Catskills and he was driving with his Gansa Mishpacha. He had all the kids in the back. One of his big station wagons, a big, big car, all the kids in the back. No, mommy, are we there yet? Tati, are we there yet? And he's driving, he's going downhill and he realizes he's going a bit too fast. So he presses on the brakes and he realizes the brakes are broken. They're not working. He's like, uh oh. Something going on over here. He starts, to, he starts to schwitz. He starts to sweat a bit. And he's like, no, this is terrible. Now, so far it's clear. So everything's okay. But he's like, no, no. But <laughs> this is going to be gefalach. He starts pushing this way, like that way. Maybe the light's not going on. Something's not happening. And he's going faster and faster down the hill. And the kids in the back are going, Tati, Tati, this is great. Go faster, go faster. And he's like, ah, this is going to end really badly. He's saying to heal him. He doesn't know what to do. All of a sudden, he finds a bend. And he manages to steer over to the car to the bend. It slows down. He manages to stop the car safely. Zuk Turn. 
that sometimes we're going so fast, we're going downhill. And if we're going downhill, we don't even realize how to stop ourselves unless we take a turn. And when we take that turn, then everything can change. And that's what I said, the moment of El. Every moment of Elul is Kaddish, every moment of Elul is so Choshev, is so important because what we're doing now can prepare. Remember, it's the smallest thing that we do. The smallest thing that we do can change a turn to Be'ez HaShem. Give us a chsim sivitayven a kid ge'ben shu.